Okay, so to continue from the last page, uh, so the more the more massive an object is, the greater the force of gravity. And the greater the force of gravity, the stronger the normal force will be, right? Because normal force points in the opposite direction to gravity in this case. And the greater the normal force, the higher your force of friction is. Now then what about kinetic friction? What is that? Now that is a very similar concept. So kinetic friction is the friction on a moving object. So if the object is already moving, okay, so friction on a moving object. So that's called kinetic friction. So if the object is already moving, the amount of force that you lead to actually accelerate it even faster. So now remember, the object is already moving. So that means you are trying to get it to speed up or to slow down. So the object already have some kind of movement, some kind of speed, and you're just trying to make it go faster or go slower. Now, if that's the case, then you will, now, and then you try to push the box, and then you'll realize, hey, oh, let me actually draw it like a little bit differently. Okay, so you uh, you realize, hey, I still need to find friction, but the friction is not as strong as it was when the object is at rest. So it turns out that you actually lead only a smaller force. You need a smaller force to push an object that's already moving compared to an object that's at rest. So it's always harder in, a, in another way, right? It's harder to start something at rest than to make it go faster when it's already moving. So the static friction between two surfaces is always greater, it turns out, than the kinetic friction between the two same, same two surfaces, okay? So static friction is greater than kinetic friction. Now, for those of you who have, you know, had the, I guess, pressure to push a car because something is wrong with the car and you have to push it for some reason before, uh, you would, you probably have, you know, the sensation that, you know, at the beginning when the car is not moving, it is really hard to start it. But once the car is speeding up, you know, a little bit, once the car is already moving, then to keep it moving or even just to, you know, make it go faster or slower is not as difficult once the car is already in motion. So at the beginning, it's very hard to move. When the car is in motion, then it's easier to move because the static friction is U greater than the kinetic friction between two surfaces. Okay, now let's look at a few examples really quickly. Okay, so you have an object on a tabletop. With a, so you're trying to push it with a force of 45 Newton. Now let's say that is the pi force. Okay, so that's 45 Newton. And the box is 3.75 kilogram, which means we can use it to find out what a force of gravity is. Remember, force of gravity is mg. So if have, we have the mass, which is 3.75, we can find out what the force of gravity is, which is 3.75 kilogram multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity on Earth, which is 36.75 Newton. Now, so if I then say, hey, there is actually normal force on the other side because you're sitting on a table, then it shouldn't be too hard for you to realize that the normal force is also 36.75, right? Because one force going up, one force pointing down, they have to be equal. Now, at this point, we need to consider our newest member in this game, which is friction. Now, we no longer have friction. We actually have to find friction. So find the force of friction and determine the acceleration. So for this surface, the coefficient of friction is measured to be 0 0.65. So they give you mu. So this number coefficient of friction is mu. So what we do is find friction. Friction can be obtained very simply. So part A, friction is mu of n. Okay, so mu times normal force. Well, mu is 0.65. Normal force happens to be, well, roughly 36.75. So we are going to get our mu, which is up around 24 Newton. Okay, so if you multiply it, you can get around 24 Newton. Okay, that's good. Now, so we have 24 Newton. So now we look at if we are strong enough to actually do this battle or not. So we are comparing our friction versus our pi force. 
See, these these two does not balance, right? A pi force is current is clearly winning. So therefore, we do have a winner, and that means we can determine a net force, right? So when we want to determine acceleration, we always talk about trying to find out the net force. Now, net force is the winning force minus the losing one. In this case, x you know a pi force, which is forty five newton, is trying to fight friction, which is twenty four newton. So I should take a pi force. And minus friction, and Newton's second law comes in. F net always equal to m a. So once we use our free body diagram to determine who is winning, we make it equal to m a. So winning side is forty five. The losing side friction is twenty four. Mass of the box is three point seven five. And look how easy it is to get the acceleration. So now the acceleration, which is five point six. Meter per second square, and it's going to well. I guess from the picture that I draw to the right hand side. All right, so that is the solution to this example. Okay, so we get friction by finding out first what is F n, and then we can go ahead and find friction. All right, so next one. Now a point two kilogram puck. Is being pushed along a sheet of ice, so ice with a force of zero point two four newton. Okay, so we have another applied force again. So the applied force is zero point two four newton. All right. So if it moves at a constant velocity, oh, constant velocity. Okay, that's telling me something. Constant velocity is telling me that in this battle, no one wins. That's what it's telling me. Because if someone win, I should not have constant velocity. I should have acceleration, right? So that means no one wins. Now I already know force of gravity and normal force is going to somehow cancel each other. I know those two already. I have the mass. I can find out what they are. So let's do that then. Now and since no one wins because of the word constant velocity, that means so constant velocity kind of imply that the acceleration is zero. And that also imply the net force is zero. That means all the forces are balancing out. So let's balance them out then. Okay. So how do we get F n? Well, F n should be equal to F g, which is mass times gravity. And this time the mass is zero point two kilogram. So therefore we can get F g, which is one point nine six newton. All right. Then the next thing we want to get. Is friction, but friction must equal to F A because constant velocity. Everyone is balancing out, so therefore it is also zero point two four newton because x ah、uh, because a pi force is that. Now and then we use the equation, which is friction is equal to mu F N. If I want mu. I'll take friction and divide by F n. Well, friction turns out to be zero point two four newton, and F n is one point nine six. So do that division, and you get the amount of the amount of friction, which is represented by this number between ice and the puck, is point one two two.